so let's assume uh, that I have a requesting host here. Okay, so here we have a requesting host. Okay, and the requesting host is CIS dot polytech dot edu. Right, and then the whenever a requesting host request uh, something, right? Say it request GAIS or uh, GIA.CS, University of Massachusetts.edu. This is the host that this requesting host wants to access. The first point of contact here is the local DNS server. Local DNS server and it has address a dns dot dot edu right so the request will be forwarded to and this is the sequence so the request will be forwarded to a local dns server say dns dot dot edu and the host that wants to access you know another host is cis dot poly dot this poly is for polytech dot edu right now if we have this entry at the dns server it would be returned to the requesting host but we you know assume that this this, this is not there uh, in the local dns server so the request uh, you know would be forwarded to the request would be forwarded to uh, to root uh, dns server Remember, we have 13 root DNS servers and in total uh, 247 DNS servers. So the request will be forwarded to root DNS server. So this is query number two. So root DNS server does what? It looks at the database and returns the address of uh, the top level uh, domain server. So here we have in hierarchy, if you remember, here we have um, here we have a top level domain DNS servers that are responsible for what? That are responsible for specific domains. dot com. dot edu. dot you know pk. dot fr and Etc. Etc. So uh, now, after getting the address of specific top-level domain server, uh, the local DNS server forwards request to the specific top-level DNS server, and this is request query number four. And in response, uh, the top-level DNS server returns um, what the address, the authoritative DNS server address, right? So remember, in hierarchy, we have root DNS servers, then we have top-level DNS servers, and then we have what? Then we have here. Then here we have uh, authoritative. So here we have authoritative. authoritative DNS uh, server, okay? Uh, and that is what uh, DNS dot uh, UMass dot edu, right? And now, after getting the address of this authoritative DNS server, the, the local DNS server of the host will contact the authoritative DNS server. This is query number six, right? And now this authoritative DNS server has the mapping of 
the local addressable host and the host that I'm interested in getting in contact is say G A I A dot U Mass University of Massachusetts dot uh, it's in CS. dot cs dot umass dot edu right and it uh, you know it gives the it sends back the ip address of the specific goes to uh, the local dns server and then this local dns server uh, sends it back to or provides it to the uh, the requesting host right so uh, you can see there are total, you know, eight queries here. And even if I have local, if I involve here, if you are getting it, if I involve here local uh, DNS servers as well, then I have another couple of queries to resolve the specific host uh, accessible host. So these queries are either recursive in nature. These these DNS queries are, uh, you know, um, it, 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 they are either recursive. Or they these queries are iterative. Right? For example, uh, this query here is uh, recursive, where I'm trying to ask the local DNS server for the address of uh, the destination host. And all the other queries here are iterative. Why? Because every response is being returned to the local DNS server. So if uh, I'm sending something to the DNS server, the response is uh, being sent back to uh, the local DNS server. If I ask something, uh, you know, query uh, uh, top level DNS server, the request is being sent back to the local DNS server. If I'm sending something to authoritative DNS server, the request is being sent back to the local. So these are these queries. You know, these queries are iterative in nature. And here, uh, this is recursive. So we can have, you know, we can have another scenario to understand, um, you know, how the queries will, um, you know, will be processed if these are uh, these are totally recursive in nature. So uh, let me, uh, we can, you know, uh, remodel this scenario. So, for example, I have this, I have this requesting uh, host. cis.politech.edu and I want to access the other host in UMass. So what I have to do is I will send or forward this request to uh, the local DNS server. Okay, so this is request number one. And now, this request will be forwarded to uh, the root DNS. Server, right? So this is query number two. And now, it will be forwarded to uh, to the top level domain DNS server. And now this is three number three, and it will forward it to uh, authoritative so this is authoritative. DNS server that is DNS dot UMass dot video, right? And this is query number four. It will provide the address of specific host.
right? Um, to the uh, top level, DNS server, then it will forward it to the specific root, and root will forward it to the local DNS, and then it will forward it to, right? So now this sort of, uh, you know, the queries, the, the, this is a scenario that involves all recursive uh, DNS queries. Okay. Right. So, but usually, uh, you know, um, um, this is how our requests are. Our requests are, or DNS requests are generated in. Uh, response is uh, generated in a typical internet scenario. All right. So, um, and obviously, uh, requesting the, the distributed servers involves a delay, maybe. So, we need to have local DNS uh, caching in order to mitigate uh, the delay. And uh, quickly, I would like to comment on uh, the, uh, the, the, the way DNS dis distributed database uh, store resource records. So usually the resource record that is stored by, um, uh, so I'm talking about uh, resource records. So it's it's uh, it's um, um, you know it has four tuples. It has a name. Then it has value, and it has a type. And TTL TTLA stands for time to live. This is time to live. I mean, time to live means for how long we gonna maintain this entry in our cache. So if this if this type is A. If in type we have if type is equal to a, then uh, the name is uh, the host name. Then you know name is uh, a host is a host name, and value is IP address. Right, value is the IP address okay but if uh, the type is if the type is uh, ns uh, then uh, you know the name is uh, the domain and the value is um, uh, uh, the value is uh, uh, the the host name of an authoritative dns server right so uh, let me write it here. Uh, the name is name is a domain, uh, and uh, the value is a uh, value is the, uh, the 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 host name of an authoritative DNS server. It's the the host name of an authoritative DNS server. For example, um, the name is foo.com, right? And uh, uh, the authoritative um, DNS server is ns dot who dot com right and type we know is ns okay and then we have obviously ttl the value for which we will remember this entry and if uh, the type is uh, for example c name uh, then we have the canonical name here right that is um, the name is uh, the domain name like foo dot um, but the value is what value is the canonical name? That is, say, relay one dot par dot two dot com, and obviously, um, you know, the the type here is C name. Means we are interested in getting what uh, the canonical name, 
right? And then remember, I discussed with you the MX record and the type is what? The type is equal to MX that we were discussing in the services provided by the uh, DNS for uh, mainly aliasing here. Uh, you know, the, 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 the name is again the domain name, which is foo.com, but the value is what? Value is the canonical name for the email. And this is what this is the MX record. Remember, we talked about, about it that MX record helps us a company to uh, do what to have the same, you know, same domain for or same host name for the web server as well as for the email server.